right, so number 10, let's look at the intermediate value theorem. It says a function f is on a closed interval a to b, so this is my x1 to x2. Um, show whether the conditions of the intermediate value theorem hold for the given value of k. If the conditions hold, find a number c, basically an x value, that comes from this established given k y value. If the theorem does not hold, give the reason. Whether the theorem holds or not, sketch the curve and the line y is equal to k. So let's first of all sketch the curve and let's sketch the line. If I rewrite this, f of x is equal to negative x squared plus x plus 2, I can factor out a negative and I'm basically going to have this is equal to f of x. I can furthermore cancel, or not cancel, but factor this out, x minus 2, and then it's going to be x plus 1. Okay, I can tell from right here, if I were to graph this out, I have zeros at positive 2, and I have a zero at negative 1. It does have a negative coefficient, which means the end behavior as I go to positive infinity will go down. Because it is an even function, not an even function, but an even power, it will um, reflect accordingly as I go to negative infinity. The only thing that I need to, without a calculator purposes, is put in 0 for x so I can find my y-intercept of 2. And my graph pretty much looks something like this, rough sketch. y is equal to 1. k is my y value. So if I go to 1, I'm looking at this right here. Now understand what this interval that was given to us is. We're looking between 0 and which will be 3 is somewhere over here. We're looking to see between 0 and 3, we're trying to find an x value that comes from this given k value of 1. Alright, so going through the rules, the very first rule that we have to show for intermediate value theorem is, is the continuous, or sorry, is the function continuous on this established interval from 0 to 3? Well, we know all quadratic functions are continuous, so we're going to go ahead and put f of x is continuous on the interval 0 to 3. That's from the x1 to the x2 value. Alright, second step. We should show, we must show that f of a does not equal f of b. So that these two given values, these given y values, are not equal to one another. So remember, this is your a term, this is your b term. So if I showed f of a, I'm looking for f of 0. That is, what is the y value when x is 0? This so right here is f of a. So if I put 0 in, I would get 2. So f of a is equal to, you could say f of 0, that's f of a, is equal to 2. Now let's find f of b. f of b is f of 3. Well, if I put 3 into this equation, I can use synthetic division if I want it, or I can just plug it in. This is a small enough, enough number that I can just plug in and get 2 plus 3 minus 9. And you're going to get negative 4. Okay, so f of 3 is equal to negative 4. These two right here do not equal each other. 2 obviously does not equal negative 4. So I can continue. Okay, so that checks out. The third one, it's let k equal 1. Now k is the y value f of c is that y value. We're going to say f of c is equal to 1. What we need to do right now is see and look at these two y values. One is at 2 and one is at negative 4. For me, for, for, uh, so that I can continue with this making sure that the theorem holds or if it does not hold, the given k value must be somewhere in between, not equal to, but in between. That's the whole process and the whole reason of step two right here. In between the y value of two and negative four. Or, yeah, obviously one is in between. Because one is in between, I can continue and go ahead and solve for this c.
That's a very important step. All right, so we're going to say f of c is equal to 1, and I'm just going to recopy my equation here with c's. 2 plus c minus c squared is equal to this oops, positive 1 that we're relating k equal, and now we're just going to solve for c. So I'm going to move the c's to the left and make everything equal to 0. c squared minus c minus 1 is equal to 0. You should see right here that you're not going to be able to factor by hand. You're not going to get factors of 1 that will add up to a negative 1. So we're going to go ahead and do this as far as not being whole integers. We're going to go ahead and make these um, or use a quadratic formula to solve for this c. So we have x or c equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is subtracting 4 times 1 times negative 1, so I'm adding 4, all over 2 times 1, because that's 2a. So I have c is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. The square root of 5 is a little bit over 2, so you can say 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 is probably going to be somewhere like 3 halves, a little bit over 3 halves. 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 is probably going to be something negative. We're trying to prove that this x value that we find is between 0 and 3. So these x values, they are, we're giving it the variable of c, but they are representing x values. The negative one, this one won't fit. This one's going to be negative. We need something between 0 and 3. This one will be our number. Okay? Because we were given a k value that was in between my f of a and f of b, because this is a continuous function, it will yield a value that will be between 0 and 3. And we have found it. We're going to put, therefore, there exists. The theorem holds. So let me go ahead and write that down. The theorem holds um, there exists c is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2, which is basically um, between 0 and 3. So exist, um, there exists a c, which is this that is between or lies on the interval 0 to 3 and you would be done.